Hi, welcome to the channel and welcome back to the people that have been here before. I am the Rookie Woodworker. Right now we're at the beginning of September and October is coming fast and the next thing you know it is going to be Hallow Thanksmas season on top of us and things are going to be happening all at once. And if you're like any other Rookie Woodworker, projects take time. So if you want to make all of your Christmas gifts this year with your hands and you got a heck of a Christmas list, you're going to want to start coming up with project ideas right now. I got your first gift idea right here. Coasters. I'm going to show you how to make these coasters and this stand off of your scrap wood pile. And let's say this sparked the idea for two of your friends or family. But those friends or family might get a little bit uptight about getting the same exact gift from you. I got you there too. We got a different style. And we're going to go over this style too. This is a two for a video. I'm going to show you both of these off of your scrap wood pile. This is exciting. Let's get to it. All right, so we'll start this off by going through the scrap pile and uh, sorting out some different cutoffs with different contrasting colors of wood. The goal here is to make coasters that are four inches by four inches. So I'm going to sort these out into groups that'll be about roughly five inches wide. Um, then whenever I uh, start milling them down, they'll end up shrinking down closer to four inches and then we'll trim them up. To start this milling process off, we're going to start out at the joiner and try to get a flat side on all of these pieces. That way whenever we use the thickness planer, it don't like wobble around on the table as it's going through. With the thickness planer, we're going to mill everything down to a uniform width the entire length of the uh, pieces of wood. Now each piece of wood is going to have its own individual width of which I do not have a target for. I'm just uh, milling them all down so that each piece has a nice uniform width the entire length of the piece. And then we'll glue them all together and, and uh, see where we land. I'm using one single set of clamps for four different glue ups here. When you do it like this, you got to be careful not to make a boneheaded move and glue them all together because, you know, these need to break apart into four different pieces. Look at me using my utensils like my mama taught me. Man, she'd be proud. But three of these glue ups are for the coasters and the only target for them that we have right now is to be over four inches wide so far. And then one of these glue ups is for one of the coaster racks and the target for it was to be over five inches wide at this point. And as you see here, I managed to not glue them all together, so that's a that's a bonus here. Now I'm going to take them over to the joiner and try to get one flat side before we take them over to the thickness planer. You'll notice that I never cut all the pieces into uniform lengths, so I got like staggered pieces at the end. And I figured I'd just save the time since I'm going to cut them into four inch squares anyway and just do it then. No sense in doing work twice, am I right? All right, and at this point, we're gonna take them to the thickness planer and plane them down so that both sides are perfectly flat. And then we'll uh, see what the thickness is that we get to at that point. Now, once I get two flat sides, I got two choices. One, I can take them over to the bandsaw and rip them in half and double the amount of coasters I'll get out of it. Or two, just keep on planing them down until I reach that thickness target that I'm going for which is three-eighths of an inch thick. Unfortunately in this project I did not end up with enough meat to be able to cut them in half and then plane them down to the proper thickness doubling the amount of of coasters that I get out of these. So I ended up just planing them down to three-eighths of an inch thick. Thank you. 
And now I will finally use the table saw to trim them down to that uniform 4 inch width. All right, so before I get into chopping this stuff up, I wanted to get into explaining uh, what my setup is here. Now what this is, is a zero clearance setup, which means my back fence, there's zero clearance between the fence and the blade, and, and the insert here, there's zero clearance between the insert and the blade as well. Now what that does for you is, When you make a cut like this, you have zero or next to zero tear out or splintering after the cut. Now, my back fence is just a piece of wood that I put four screws in and then cut down through and then four screws hold both sides independently against that fence. The insert is an insert that I actually bought um, instead of making it myself. You can make it yourself, but looking at the price of it versus spending the hour, hour and a half to actually make this myself so that it fits in there perfectly, it was more worth my time just to buy it. And what I found with this insert is that it can be mounted in either direction. But if you mount it one direction, you make a cut, and then you come back and you mount it the other direction, the blade won't exactly line up with that hole. It's about a sixteenth of an inch over. So if you go ahead and just cut out that sixteenth of an inch, you start creating clearance, which eliminates the whole reason you have it to begin with. So if you get one or make one, make sure you label the front of it so that you don't put it in backwards the next time you use it. Nice thing about having a wooden fence like this is you can just mark your fence for your measurements wherever you want and not even feel bad about it. So I made my 4 inch mark and now it's time to start knocking out some characters. One after another after another after another until we get them all done. Now that we got the coasters knocked out, let's start building some stands. I'm going to start with cutting out some dowel rods for the, uh, the bigger base. Then I'll measure out where to drill my holes, being careful to be perfect to get that in the same exact spot in each corner of these pieces. Because if they're not in a perfect spot, it'll end up being all crooked and wonky. Then I drill them out with my drill press with a Forstner bit. Now, if you notice here, I got a piece of plywood underneath this. That piece of plywood being flat up against the bottom of the piece helps prevent tear out. And then I move it so that I make a different hole in that plywood every time. So that, that way my, my exit side of the piece is clean. Before gluing this thing together, I like to go over and sand the pieces that are going to be facing the inside. That way, whenever I glue it together, sanding it is going to be so much easier. Um, because once it's glued together, it's going to be hard to get equipment in there between them. This, this makes life a lot better. Then I'll use my flesh glue brush to uh, put glue on the inside of these holes. Now when I put this together, I make sure I'm pushing the dowel rods from the inside of the piece, not the outside. If you push it in from the outside, you end up squeezing out glue on the inside of your piece and it's really hard to clean that up after it's all glued up. Then I'll put my coaster set in between the pieces and I'll pound it onto the dowel rods to get my width set to those coasters. 
I made sure I did this before sanding the coasters. That way I can squeeze that in there nice and tight. And then when I sand the coasters, it'll loosen it up just perfectly for me. Then I'll clean up the excess dowel rods on the band saw. You can also use a flush cut saw for this too. Now for the other base setup, the goal is to cut two U shapes out of single pieces of wood. That way our pieces that stick straight up, kind of like towers, the uh, grains will match whenever they're glued back together. And hopefully it creates a nice seamless look there. Then I'll take my bottom pieces and measure out a half lap joint. And then we'll take it over and cut it out. I'm using the bandsaw for this, but there's really a lot of options for this. Uh, my other favorite is to use the cross cut sled and uh, the table saw. Using a dado blade would really help out with this too. And we'll go ahead and glue that lap together. And I'm using the router to put a round over on the towers. These are really small pieces and I don't trust myself putting my hand that close to a router bit. So I'm using a, a pair of pliers to uh, keep me a little bit further away from it. I don't know that that's the best way to do this, but it makes me feel comfortable and I got a pretty decent result out of it. If you have a better way, let me know in the comments below and I will explore that later. Alright, so we'll glue them on and try to be careful to make sure all our grains line up the way they were when we cut it out of the original piece. I did find it helpful to put numbers on the outside of these before I took them and separated them all apart uh, and that made it helpful to just match them up afterwards. And then we do the ultimate task of sanding. Sand everything over and over again with different grits getting finer and finer until everything is glass smooth. And then we get to the finishing part, which is exciting. Because then you get to see me mess up the camera angle so that all you can see is a dry piece leave the frame and a wet piece come back down in its place. Great. But what I'm using here is a teak oil finish, which is one of my favorite finishes. It's a real nice, simple, easy uh, finish to use. You wipe it on with a good bit of it, let it soak in for about 15 minutes. You come back and you wipe on another good bit of it, let it soak in for about 15 minutes, then come back with a dry rag and then you wipe it all down and basically buff it in until it looks great. And this is how they turned out for a scrap wood project. These things always turn out great. I absolutely love doing these little projects. But if you like this project, do me a favor and hit that like button on the video. And if you want to see more projects like this, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way it lets you know the next time I post a video. And if you want to, you can watch one of these other videos popping up on the screen right now. Till next time, make something awesome.